Welcome back to the Heat Pump Bunker and today we're talking about Part L of the building regulations and how this affects the application of heat pumps in commercial buildings. You might be watching and wondering what Part L is. If that's the case, this next bit's for you. Part L has been designed to improve building performance by ensuring better conservation of fuel and power. Part L covers all new build buildings as well as refurbishments to existing buildings. It first came into effect in 2006, so why are we talking about it now? It was updated in June of this year and will bring about a 27% improvement in building emissions. So what are the major changes affecting heat pumps? Buildings now have a primary energy target as well as a carbon target and so this is going to encourage the use of heat pumps over fossil fuel appliances. The base CO2 factor for electricity is much lower than it was in the previous version of the regulations. Heat pumps are powered by electricity and so the resultant carbon is much lower in the new version of Part L. A heat pump with a COP of 3 will be responsible for circa 40% less primary energy than a gas boiler. A conventional heat pump which can heat domestic hot water to 60 or 65 degrees would have an SCOP of around 2. This means that its application would have an adverse effect on the carbon target. What else has changed? It has also been stated that heating systems should have a maximum flow temperature of 55 degrees C, ensuring that heat emitters and pipe work are heat pump ready. Heat pumps serving domestic hot water must have an SCOP of 2.86 or greater to have the benefit to the carbon calculation. CO2 heat pumps can heat hot water to 80 degrees C with an SCOP of 3 to 4. This will give a decent carbon saving and a good benefit to the Part L calculation. The changes to Part L of the building regulations will mean that most commercial buildings will be heated with a heat pump. It's going to be important to select the right heat pump and run it at the right temperatures to get good efficiencies and the carbon reductions required. 